So if we look at the shape of the rib cage, the rib cage is not as broad or wide or flared out as some of our earlier ancestors. And so what that means is that the space in between the pelvis and the diaphragm where our guts live is, uh, seems to be a smaller volume. We have smaller guts. Which suggests that he was eating better quality food. The shorter the gut, the better quality of the food. So meat could be an explanation for that, but there could be another explanation as well, why guts and teeth are getting smaller. It could have been that these guys were cooking their food. It's controversial because until recently it was thought humans didn't control fire until around 400,000 years ago. But new chemical analysis techniques may have just put a match to all that. Cooking with fire is a uniquely human behaviour. Today, Homo sapiens are the only species to do it, but that hasn't always been the case. In Williamstown, Massachusetts, Dr. Ann Skinner has been analysing tiny fragments of ancient animal bones that have been burned. They were found at a site used by Homo erectus, and Ann made an extraordinary discovery. Using a technique known as electron spin resonance, she can analyze changes in bone protein. These reveal what temperature the bones were burned at. Natural fires from the time of Homo erectus would have been grass fires that burn at 300 degrees Celsius. But man-made fires, created in a hearth, reach much higher temperatures. So if I have bones that are heated above 300 and especially above 400 to give us a little leeway here, then I can be sure that they were not heated in a grass fire and hence they have to have been heated in a fire constructed by hominids. Anne used her technique to analyze burnt fragments of antelope bones found in Svartkrans cave in South Africa. This was a cave where Homo erectus remains had also been found. Remarkably, she found that the bones had burned at 350 degrees Celsius. Anne believes this shows they must have been burnt in a half. I can show that these bones were burnt in a fire that must have been created and controlled at the cave and that dates to somewhere between 1 and 1.5 million years, which is older than any other site that has ever been found. Scientists believe that the only species to have the mental ability to use fire at this time was Homo erectus. The idea that these entities had the ability to even conceive that they might control their environment rather than just letting the environment control them. I mean, instead of seeing a burning bush and running in the other direction, to conceptually say, hey, we could use that even if we weren't cooking we could use it to scare away the leopards. We could use it to keep warm. Just thinking that there's something that you could use in your environment is, is, uh, takes more effort than you might think. Anne's findings have rewritten the timeline on Homo erectus's ability to harness fire. Evolutionary biologist Dr. Rachel Carmody has studied the research. She believes that the early use of fire could even have accelerated their development. This kind of work is really showing us that humans were controlling fire and were possibly using it for things like cooking very early on in human evolution. Cooked food means a more varied, higher energy diet. This reduces the workload for the gut and leaves calories spare for the rest of the body. A fifth of the calories we consume are used to fuel our brains. And there's a theory that a switch to cooked food is one of the things that encouraged an increase in brain size. What we see at this point in human evolution is the beginning of a trade-off where gut size gets smaller, so you save energy by having a smaller gut. But humans seem to have been able to reallocate that saved energy toward fueling a larger brain. So is there a link between a better diet and growing bigger brains? I find this really intriguing and slightly unsettling because for me, this is evolution turned on its head. 
Because we're saying that we are saving some energy somewhere, say so that means we can grow a bit of ourselves bigger. George, what do you think? Chimpanzee spends 47% of his time chewing and eating and processing food, whereas humans only spend 47 So you've got all this extra time and energy to do something with it. Why not cooking? 